Now there is one additional thing we should consider, which is uh, looking at the uh, what we call the power of the test. The power of the test um, takes into account the sample size. So the, this is the probability distribution for uh, sample size of 10. So in other words, 10 binomial trials. And we look at 9 and 10 here, which is these highlighted ones, and we notice that the sum of their probabilities is about 24%. So that includes this red bar and this red bar over here. Now that is a problem because in fact even if we went to, um, it, we observed 10 out of 10 and uh, we, we needed a 5% error rate, uh, well in this case even having 10 out of 10 we'd still be above the 5% error rate. We'd be at 5.6% chance of still observing something um, uh, that or greater. In which case we couldn't actually reject the null hypothesis at all in this test. But let's consider another problem. Um, let's just say that uh, we want to test uh, the hypothesis that, so we're told that 70 chemical detection kits of one type are placed in the gas chamber together for a fixed period of time and a measured amount of a lethal gas is introduced, gas is introduced into the chamber. 56 kits register positive for a lethal gas while the other 14 fail to register positive. An older model of the kit has a detection success rate of 50%. Is this a significant improvement, or is the experiment attributed, attributable to sampling variability? So, um, in our population of all detection kits, um, we are assuming that so far pi is equal to 0.5. There's a 50% success rate. Now, in our sample of, of 70 kits, we have that our approximation of pi hat is equal to, or our approximation of the true population proportion is 56 out of 70. That's our success rate. Now 56 out of 70 um, is equal to 80%. So yeah, well wow, that looks to be a lot bigger than 50%, but is it possible that this was due to ram uh, uh, to random sampling variability. Well, we want to test this with an allowable type 1 error rate of 0 0.05. So the probability that we would observe x greater than or equal to uh, 56 if the null hypothesis is true, that is, if pi is in fact 0.5, should be smaller than um, 0.05. So in other words, we want the probability that we observe this to be extremely small in order for us to con uh, be convinced that we have not uh, made a false recommendation. So the first thing that we'll do, um, we'll come back to this in a second, is one, state the hypotheses. So H0 is that pi is equal to 0.5. The alternative hypothesis is that pi is greater than 0.5, which is what we wish to test. Now the second thing we want to do is establish the decision rule. So we will reject the null hypothesis if, the, uh, similarly to the other example, the alpha observed is less than or equal to the set alpha. So if the probability of seeing what we see is smaller than 0 0.05, then we will reject the null hypothesis. Next we need to do our calculations. So step three calculations. So what is the probability that we would observe what we saw? That is the probability that x is greater than or equal to, what was it, 56, if in fact pi is equal to 0.5. So this is a binomial experiment. So what we want to find is if, well first of all I'll go over to the spreadsheet so it, it's really easy to see, for all the possibilities out of a sample of 70, we could have 0 all the way up to 70 successes. Now, the probability that we get 56 or more is the sum of all of these probabilities right here. So it's the sum of all those guys. And so what I will do is um, just show the sum of all of those. And, wow, okay, so there's actually a 21% chance that we would get um, see on a regular basis 56 or more successes in 70 total trials. So this tells us